Brennan, for the sake of our audience who doesn't know, and our dear sweet uh, Uncle Kerrigan here, how did you get involved? <laughs> Well, uh, 93 is when I started watching Power Rangers. I was three when it was on. So <laughs> uh, I actually just kind of throw up. I'm just I'm just being real with you. And thank you for being part of my childhood. Our first guest is a veteran actor of stage and screen and a pioneer of voice talent of early American anime adaptions from the 1980s. Today, he joins us to discuss giving voice to Monitor Org in Power Rangers Wild Force, Camellia Khan in Power Ranger Time Force, Magna Defender in Power Rangers Lost Galaxy, and finally, going back to the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers series as everyone's favorite golden goon, Goldar, please welcome Kerrigan Mahan. Good morning, Ranger fans. <laughs> Uh, what an introduction, man. <clears throat> well, thank you. I, I, I try to do my best. Try to do my best. Thank and uh, before I bring the, the, the kids on, I <laughs> want to talk to you uh, just a little bit about <clears throat> the Harmony Gold years. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so for those of you who don't know, Harmony Gold was one of the original importers of anime in the American markets, and we wouldn't be here, to, anime fandom would not be here today without the work of Harmony Gold and actors such as yourself. So thank you for being a part of that and that building block of modern fandom. Thank you. It was, uh, it was a great, fun, wonderful, <laughs> I, 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 I would never have expected to have gotten emotional. That's, that's, that's true. It was a great time. We 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 went. In some cases, we would leave. We we worked three studios uh, at a, at the studio called Intersound, mm -hmm. and Studio A, Studio B, and Studio C. And we had so much work going on that we would sometimes leave one project, go downstairs to another project go upstairs to a third project and walk out of the studio as the sun was coming up. Wow. Wow. And it, it, a really a curious output, especially um, my favorite, which I didn't find out years later, which was two different separate series, Captain Harlock and the Queen of a Thousand Years, which was a Captain uh -huh. Harlock and the Queen of Millennium edited together and fused. I know a lot of purists at the time uh, gave it some crap, but I, I think they also gave it crap because it meshed so well together and it actually functioned and stood as a this unique blended series. You're bringing out, um, bringing up um, titles that I, I had, I mean, I haven't heard that title in so many years. Again, we did so many. I, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing I probably did between live action movies where we were dubbing live action movies too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, one aired every Easter. Um, it was an epic, uh, a child, a child, a child called or a child named Jesus. And I played a horrifically nasty character. This was a big, huge Italian um, epic yeah. that we dubbed. And the dubbing, we were the best. We were the best dubbers in the world, except some in Italy. But those were the years of wow! Oh my goodness, my yeah. goodness! Yeah, and fun. and the years of old style. You had to work off of audio tape. So, all right, let's do it again. No mm -hmm. digital, no modern accoutrement. Two inch tape, and we do. Uh, we also had no beeps. We did not have to throw on the fourth imaginary beep. We went to a red light that came on and we had <clears throat> our time code was a 144 plus, 144 plus plus, 144 plus 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 going into 145. So when you saw a 144 plus, when you watch that meter just after it hit 144 and you'd get to the point where, you know, you're really bringing, these are the kinds of questions that I, I like, but I'm not doing very good because I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I, I mean, this is, this goes back. I could, I could talk for the whole show and I wasn't invited to do that. So I, I, as I said, I just wanted to break the ice on that. Love <laughs> yeah. to have you back sometime. And let's, let's talk about the tape years of, of American anime. Absolutely.
Absolutely. All right. Our next guest, he is an actor, stunt performer, and martial artist here today to discuss the role of Eric Myers, a.k.a. the Quantum Ranger in Power Rangers Time Forces and Power Rangers Wild Force. Please welcome Dan Southworth. Hey! Hey! I'm well, here. Uh, <laughs> uh, welcome to the show, Ross. How you doing? Good. Thank you. Thank you. Great to be here. Absolutely great to be here. It's like, well, well I can I can watch Kerrigan talk the whole time. I'm enjoying that. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, again, you are no stranger to uh, modern voiceover and, of course, motion capture as well. Uh, we got to talk a little bit about the Devil May, May Cry. Bring it. All right. Well, <laughs> just, just what's because well, basically you were kind of a breakout character in it, or at least your version of your uh, of your character was the breakout character. Yeah, I got lucky that people liked that. <laughs> and it not like, only it was coming off the heels of my bad. I'm gonna do this. This is an inside joke for everybody. Uh, SWAT team performance. SWAT. <laughs> <laughs> You're on SWAT, really? Whoa, a little cool. better as a performer, and I think that kind of helped with the popularity of the character. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, well, again, welcome to the show. And like I said, let's uh, have you back when we talk about motion capture and, uh, and and voiceover and video games because that's a very fertile area. Love to hear more of your recollections on that. And our next actor, he is an actor, stunt performer, and acrobat here today to discuss the role of Tyler Navarro, a.k.a. the Dino Charge Red Ranger in Dino Charge, Dino Supercharge, and Beast Morphers. Please welcome Brennan Mia. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, thank hey. you for having me here. And uh, yeah, excited. The virtual thing, the wave of the future, right? Well, you're no stranger to this because you have <laughs> you have a really, uh, really solid YouTube channel. Thank you. Yeah, that actually started growing more just because of everything going on in the world. I wanted to do something that allowed me to be creative still. So YouTube was a great outlet for that. You absolutely, absolutely done it. So uh, I know it's been a focus of a lot of your videos recently. So how are you enjoying uh, Miles Morales Spider-Man? Oh my gosh, such a good game. Um, honestly, like like Dan Southworth of the mocap, I'm hoping to do that at some point. Um, and voiceover work as well. I mean, that side of things especially being such a fan of video games and anime growing up so uh, these two to the right of my video maybe to the left of yours i don't know they are totally the people i want to be when i grow up so <laughs> i know you know <laughs> <laughs> well okay at least the fronts well, you put out so <laughs> awesome. well, I, I pretty much wear i'm 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 exactly who i am i wear it on my sleep i don't know yeah. how to play games probably why i wasn't more successful uh in Hollywood because I, I didn't have the bullshit meter. But you're more successful yeah. to life, in my opinion. Like yeah, well, yeah I've, had a, I've had a lot of fun and um, I miss the old days. I mean, mm -hmm. that, that was really, we we were happy. Uh, I, I'll save some of this for, for, for later. No problem. <laughs> Well, what I'd love to do is, and to our audience, uh, yes, Austin St. John will be joining us. He, We are trying to work on some technical issues right now, and as soon as it's clear, he will jump on into it. So let's go ahead and underway. Gentlemen, we here, welcome to the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Uh, we here at GalaxyCon, we miss the days, and we're looking forward to the return of the days when we can host you on our physical stages and get you back in front of your fans. In the meantime, we have this forum, and we're so glad to have you here. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm uh, just looking forward to... Uh, kicking Austin's ass one more time. <laughs> <laughs> so our team right now is going to the chat room and pulling out the questions for our panel. In the meantime, I would just love to start off with, I would love to hear how Power Rangers began for each of you individually. And Kerrigan, I think we definitely should start with you. Well, it, it would be the beginning, wouldn't it? Um, mm -hmm. You know, it came out of nowhere. We're all working all the time doing all kinds of jobs every single day, sometimes three different jobs, three different studios, three completely <clears throat> unrelated jobs. Um, you know, I might have done a trailer for a movie in the morning, uh, done a looping session on a TV show in the afternoon and have an audition at something across town at five o'clock for a commercial or whatever. I mean, it was nonstop. Yeah. We were like, firemen putting out fires every day, everywhere, <clears throat> fighting the traffic, which was not anything like it is now. I, I can't even begin. But so, <laughs> and there was no office. internet and there were no smartphones. We, when I started, there were no beepers, dude. 
Oh, wow. yeah, true. <laughs> okay. Pay phone. So we quickly, because I we don't have, I mean, other people want to talk and listen and ask questions. So I'll put it in a nutshell if it's possible. Tony Oliver, who who was originally an actor on um, on the other big hit uh, anime that I can't think of, called us all in, said, Robotech. Huh? Robotech, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, he was Rick Baker, I think, right? Yeah. Now he's a producer on that side of the fence, and he called us all in, and handpicked us, and said, you do that one, you do that one, you do that one, you do that one. Kerrigan, there's this gold one that he doesn't have much of a part, just, just do some monster voice on him. <clears throat> we did it, walked walked out, all kind of laughed. Said, well, that'll never see the light of day. <laughs> Guess we were wrong. <laughs> and the rest is history. It was it was told six weeks, uh, eight weeks later, Tony called us and said, uh, we're making it. And <clears throat> I didn't have much of a part for 16, 15, uh, 17 episodes, I think. Se episode 17, I think, was a three-part three-parter and he said you better figure out what you're doing with that voice because we screwed up the gold is huge i said oh okay <laughs> so i went into my basement i worked, worked worked on the voice for a solid hour hour and a half i had a little basement where i played drum <clears throat> and i got it I, I was happy with it and i could sustain it for about 45 minutes without any hurt hurting i could go on and do any other job sure. and that was my rule 45 minutes was this you know, there, there would be days I could get away with a little longer. There'd be days where I could go, I, I'm out at 30. I got I got a promo to do at 12, you know, blah, blah, blah. So all of a sudden it was off and running and it was just a job. We just went in and recorded and pass Austin in the hall. And they, How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> Next thing you know, we're shutting down the 101 freeway and we realized, hey, I, I, I think this thing's going to be big. It made, made, made na national news. If somebody had told me I'd be sitting here doing this, however, 26 years later, get out of here. What drugs are you on? Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Dan, how'd this start for you? Because your path was very not typical. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I had a... I, taught at a martial arts school up in Northern California and one of the students had a cousin that had a manager. <laughs> and How unbelievable. Yeah. And I said, hey, I'd like to try maybe getting into the entertainment business. You know, at the time I was doing a lot of martial arts demonstrations. So <clears throat> he said, yeah, there's this audition for this show called Power Rangers. Uh, it was when they were recasting the, the, three, the three cast members from the original first three years. So uh, I went down to this cattle call. Um, actually, I had I had an I had a, an appointment, but uh, I brought a friend with me who stood in line for the three hours to get in there and audition. Crazy. Um, we drive all the way back to Northern California. We're from San Jose, and um, I get a call a week later that they want to fly me out to Burbank and screen test me. And so I screen tested with Johnny Bosch and Steve Cardenas and uh, the, a few other members and. Um, we screen tested for a week, um, signed the contracts just in case they wanted to pick us and go right away. Uh, and then I didn't get chosen. But I figured at the time I didn't understand the hierarchy of television shows, and what was really going on. So I, I figured, you know, if I'm getting screen tested for a big television show, this is in my mind, uh, I should give, give this a shot. So I packed everything up and moved out to Los Angeles a couple of months later. And uh, I had about $3,000 in my account. Um, slept on some couches, tried to get take some odd jobs here and there, doing security, which I, you know, I had to, I had to actually have a, a talk to myself and say, hey, like, you can't be doing security for more than a couple of years, dude. Otherwise, you're going to be do, doing security all the time. Mm. So, um, but then I booked the live show, playing the Black Ranger, the very role I was <clears throat> for. I yeah. am landing in the live show because physical ability. So then I did the live show and that was when I was listening to Kerrigan as Goldar. Did that, did a couple of cool moves. I did a butterfly twist back then, that was the thing. And a bunch of other stunt guys went, that guy can do a butterfly twist, man. So when I got off the show, they hired me to do appearances for corporate headquarters. And I went around the country, appearing at malls, 
getting smacked on the butt by moms. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the kids. I miss those days. <laughs> <laughs> You're my son's favorite. <laughs> Weird stuff going on. One time we got attacked by an angry drunk mob in the middle of the um, uh, NASCAR uh, uh, speedway. There's, the, you know, you can camp out in the middle. We got yeah. we go in there, and there's this whole story. It's pretty funny. It involves a golf golf cart throwing shirts in the middle of the pathway to block, have people dive on them to block the path the passage from them getting to us. Weird stuff. It's pretty funny. So then after that, uh, I started working as a stuntman and an actor, and then I got hired as a stuntman on the show, the very season I also appear on. So they go back and get rid of <clears> me <throat> as a stuntman running from one of the egg monsters or something like that. And uh, then I got cast on the show as the quantum manager. Wow. Just oh, uh, you're in your span. It was really <clears throat> It was like you're that that outer ring. You had all those hits in the outer ring, and then yeah. fi finally you got in that bullseye. In the meantime, I had been brought in to uh, audition for blue in this season, green in that season, red in this season, and <clears throat> they wouldn't hire me. So it was Koichi that finally pushed me through for the Quantum Ranger, which was a good fit because I had an <clears throat> attitude to go. With. <laughs> well, and, and to their credit, yeah, like I said, they 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 still saw it in you, you know, to to keep being brought back and and read for those parts. That's you know, dickhead uh, kid, and went, that's the character. <laughs> <laughs> there you I go. Got, like, lucky, I got lucky. There's, there's a lot. Of, there's an awful lot of luck involved yeah. to all of this. Uh, I, mean, I look back, and I'm I'm I want you to introduce. Say your name, Brennan. Brennan. <laughs> it is Brennan. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Mejia. Simple enough. Yeah. Simple enough. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. Brennan. Yeah. There it is. So, Brennan, for the sake of our audience who doesn't know, and our dear sweet uh, Uncle Kerrigan here, how did you get involved? Well, uh, 93 is when I started watching Power Rangers. I was three when it was on. Oh. So, <laughs> uh, I actually... I just got to throw up. <laughs> I, I, I'm, just, I'm just being real with you, and thank you for being part of my childhood. Uh <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I think it was like my fifth or sixth birthday. I had, you know, the Green Ranger, literally some cosplayer came to my birthday party. Mm -hmm. I, there's pictures of me with him in the backyard posing. So like, I was a fan just from the beginning. Um, been, and I, no. pardon? Could have been me. You never know. It could have been. It could have been. I mean, were you, were, did you come to my house? It was in Marietta. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes the audio is cutting out, in and out, just so you guys know. So if I don't respond, it's not that I think you're not funny. It's just I can't hear you. Uh, fair, fair. He's just keeping up his cool facade. He doesn't want to laugh at us. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, basically fell into acting. I just wanted to do modeling first when I was like 15 or 16. And my manager pushed me to be an actor. I was really, really shy at the time. Not that I am anymore. But uh, he's like, no, you're like, you have a good height and stuff. You're not tall enough to be a model. Just be an actor. I was like, but I don't like talking. Um, anyway, now I talk too much. So I auditioned for Power Rangers Samurai. And I made it through three rounds callbacks. And I was like really pumped to get it. I was like, that was the role. Like I had to book this and I didn't book it. And I was just super like jaded against Power Rangers after that. And I skipped the Mega Force audition, which was the season after. And I was working in San Diego Zoo as an acrobat seven days a week when a friend of mine from an old acting class, literally, I haven't seen him in three years. And he is like, hey, he called me. Um, I was auditioning for something. And next door to my audition, they were doing Power Rangers. And he took it on his own free will to walk in there and be like, hey, I have an acrobat friend if you guys want to see him. And they're like, oh, yeah. So he got their contact, gave it to me. I gave it to my agent. And I was like, okay, I guess I'll try again. Um, and you know when, like, you don't want it is when you book it. That's, mm -hmm. like, I was just, well, like, no. still jaded. I was mad. Don't like, give a shit. The minute you say I don't give mm -hmm. a shit, they go, oh, get that guy. He seems to yeah. have what you're looking for. I thought they were booking me just to play a bad guy for a couple of seasons. I'm sorry. Really? I had I didn't realize I was becoming a part of the regular cast until I was halfway shoot through shooting the, my first episode. And I went, wow. Oh, Dang. I don't think I'm going to be just some bad guy. I think I'm part of the cast. That's awesome. And what a nice discovery. Yeah. yeah. As, but, as, so as, 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 as I was party to, the exact reverse. When Wendy Mal, Mal the actress Wendy Mal, Mal, Malik. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm doing a Batman and I got a regular. I'm a regular man. 
I mean, I'm I'm doing a regular gig. I'm, I'm Edwin, Edwin Alba from from. Oh, see, I'm going to say the word <laughs> <laughs> from Static Shock. Static Shock. Thank you, not Batman. Thank you, people. Yeah. Um, and um, well, you know, Mr. Big Shot, arrogant man here, didn't read his script. Well, <laughs> Wendy Malik is taking over, and I'm dying, and she's going to kill me. And I'm reading this during the we we do a rehearsal and then we shoot it. This yeah. is original animation, guys. Oh my God, you've got to be kidding me. I'm out. I'm, I'm killed in that episode. You want to talk about a pocketbook hurt. I was, <laughs> oh my God. Oh man. Nobody said a word. I found it out while we're rehearsing the show and I hadn't read the script. So there wow. you go. There's, there's well, a little nobody, told me, nobody told me my season was going to end. <laughs> really? <laughs> they were going to come back the second season. They liked us, but then they decided not to do that. So That happened. Gotcha. Yeah. That yeah, no, I, I went in knowing, you know, two seasons and you're done. Like, that's two seasons? Kinda... You got two. Well, they break it into two seasons. It's oh, the yeah. same amount of episodes. Yeah. They just add super to our title. So it's Dino Charge and then Dino Super Charge. Right, 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 right. Yeah, I, 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 uh, first time I sat with Jason Font, he told me that, uh, oh, uh, yeah, we, I got I got booked, hired, filmed, done, and fired before an episode yeah. even got to TV. Yeah. I told you, know? Jason, I said, Jason, save your money. This isn't going to last very long. It's a nice run and it's good. We're green and we're green actors. We're getting a chance to star in the series, but save your money, man. <laughs> I, I don't think there was really much to save, but that's a nice, uh, that's a nice. We got paid in memories. <laughs> you no, know, in all fairness, the screwies it all was. Yeah. Thank you, Hiam, because yeah. who would have guessed? Yeah. Who would have guessed all this? That's true. So, Brennan, uh, just two follow-ups real quick. One, um, yep. I, I don't think, hey, let's go to the zoo and see the acrobats. Tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so uh, I actually met my wife in the circus. We're both acrobats in a community program uh, in town. And it's volunteer based. So like instead of, you know, dropping your kids off to play soccer, you would take them to learn aerial silks or juggling, unicycle, whatever. Uh, so her and I perform Chinese pole, which is like when you do like human flags and things yes. yeah. um, dressed as giant fluffy koalas. So uh, that was fun. And uh, <laughs> like the Robins. Like the, say that again. You guys are an acrobatic family, just like the Robins. Yeah, yeah, essentially. It was just, uh, well, that it was one, weird. Yeah, they had a different name, but Robin comes the, from- The Flying Graces. You mean, yeah, Nightwing, yeah. The Flying which, Blendas is what they were. The little, little, little. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, it. yes to all of it. But uh, yeah, basically I was doing that and then um, I had to drive to LA for the auditions. And then I think we did four auditions total. And by the fourth one, I was like, okay, I actually do want this. Um, but you know, a lot of people were showing up with like nunchucks and swords for like the physical yeah, demonstration. Yeah, that's so funny. I, I did handstands, like straight up just did acrobatics and, uh, I brought hand balancing posts to one of them. And then they saw us after the fourth one, they didn't, we didn't hear anything for like a month. And then I heard one final callback, like, we need to see you one more time. And in my mind, I'm like, why you've seen me four times. You saw me three times for samurai. How many times do you need to see me? Like, you know who I am. Rolling after a while, yeah. Yeah, and so I drove down again, and I was annoyed. And I was like, "Watch, this is like a fake audition." I was talking to Caitlin in the car. Uh, they're just doing this to like annoy me. Well, I get in the audition. They're like, "Hey, here's a uh, some sides, and uh, we want you to do it right now, like a cold read." I was like, "Can I walk outside and look at it really quick?" And they're like, "No, you have to do it now," which never happens. Uh, I was like, "Oh, okay." So uh, I felt like this is gonna be the worst read of my life because I've never read this page. Um, there's a couple pages, and I was reading it, and in the scene. They're talking about like, oh, you know, um, take this treasure chest. It will reveal your destiny or something like that. And then casting actually handed me like a little treasure chest during the scene. And so I opened the box and in the treasure chest, uh, there's a laminated picture saying, congratulations, you're the Red Ranger. Oh. So it was a fake audition. They filmed it. They put it on YouTube somewhere. <laughs> That's a yeah. good story. I know. And then like, and then aren't, back you to glad? aren't you glad? What if you got in there with a real attitude? Right, I know. No, you know so, they have second. They, they go. Yeah, yeah, wait, wait, hold off on that little trinket. Wait a minute. Yep. Yeah. Sure, we want to work with this guy. 
No, I, I, again, just stayed in my head. And on the drive back to San Diego the whole time, I just like put on the Mighty Morphin theme song on repeat and just like blasted it. And I was like, I'm moving to New Zealand. This is ridiculous. So. Wow, that's a great story. I don't do cold readings. I will go outside for a moment. And then they would have, they would have opened the box <laughs> to the switched out notes saying, you're not the ranger. Yeah. It was more a surprise. It was like, because yeah. I've never, like even... If I've been in an audition, they're like, we actually want you to read for this character instead. They usually give you a couple minutes, like, step outside, let come in when you're ready. Not literally read it. Yeah, the that, I didn't know where you were going with that story. I thought in all the years, all the auditions, I've never heard of any. Where the hell is this going? Yeah. You know? yeah. What? Ooh, tricking you, have, you have a nice punchline on it, so thank you. Go, you. Mm -hmm. uh, you go through a lot of emotional stress with five and six auditions sometimes, and then and you still have to stay cool. You know, I, I have this wonderful agent that's representing me now. And it was a similar thing. I was ready to give up. I'm done. I'm tired. She gave me something to read on the spot. I wasn't in the mood, but I stayed. Mm. And she hired me. She she took me in on the spot. So right just, well, I mean, yeah, I quit acting actually I, while I was at the I was, zoo. I was gonna quit. I was gonna quit. Yeah, meeting with her. This was uh, only about four, three, four years ago, and now there are many stories where people are closing up their they're literally. Yeah closing up their apartments and yep. the last thing in the room is that telephone and, and they're walking out the door. I know the person, I can't say who it is. I can't remember, but they were out the door. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. all, there's no furniture. The phone a, I have a renewed career at the moment because this agent has decided to take me on. And, and her husband, I knew him when I was a bouncer, when I first moved to Los Angeles. He was Amazing. the doorman I was working for, and he's like, I ran into him uh, five years ago, and he goes, hey, you know, I, I own an agency now, a good agency, and I'm like, what agency? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe no, I'll call him. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That I is. mean, that's how it and it take me, it taken me 27 years just to get to this place right now where I finally have good representation, and and I can I can show up and and be a good professional in the audition. <laughs> You know, it's just, cons it's that whole never giving up thing, like, yeah. which is kind of Power Rangers whole kind of punchline anyway, I feel like, you know, mm -hmm. keep going. And mm -hmm. uh, that's life though. Like if you really want something and like, <clears throat> if you it's know, meant I to be, thought, you know? I, I, I found I got lazy with the voiceover and it's, it's interesting. I look back on it and think, you know, it, it was like this beautiful gift. I fell into voiceover. I was struggling as an on-camera actor, trying to do my thing, doing plays, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And I never got comfortable in front of the camera. I never had a big enough role as to where I was like, and you were always treated like shit. Yeah. You know, when you had a five, eight, ten lines and the cast is very clicky and mm -hmm. they don't treat you very nice. When you're, especially when you're a guest artist. That's what I mean. I mean, and a small guest. Yeah. You know, you're standing yeah. there and they're all talking amongst each other instead of going, hey, how you doing, man? Well, it was really, hmm. and and the memorizing and and the, yeah. and I, so I got lazy and I, st and I and I wound up in a, you know, acting in the dark, as I used used to say. So anyway, just, just, a, just an aside. Mm. No, no problem. No problem at all. I, uh, I remember I, doing, sitting right next to Brian Cranston and I were dubbing uh, 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 something at, at Intersound together, and he said, "God, I gotta get, I gotta, I got an audition. I gotta." I said, "Brian, for God's sake, give up the on camera shit, huh?" <laughs> <laughs> you know what's? I really didn't listen to you. that. Yeah. <laughs> it's before the first show. It's before he got the first show. Right. Yeah, not <clears throat> Malcolm good. in the Middle. Yeah, and it was like probably two years before he got it we were supposed to do a movie together little little road movie thing with dan shore mm -hmm. career mm. and and brian and me and i said to uh bob Barron, who was going to direct it who was one of the directors at intersound i said hey bro bob yeah why do we have to use brian i mean <laughs> 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 now you know I can. I'm self-deprecating. Most people would never tell a story like that. Mm -hmm. mm. You know, you you know what it was like, what it's like for me to watch Breaking Bad. I'm like, you are so good. 
<laughs> I was so wrong. Uh, gentlemen, what's what's been what's been your favorite memory that you've taken from being a part of the the Power Rangers? And you know, some shows they equate it to being you know, it's like a family or extended. I look at Power Rangers as being almost like part of a sports franchise. You know, that's how much you can diversify each other. Like, oh, you're a ranger? What were you? Blue Ranger, 92 to 94. Oh, yeah, it was a good year, you know? <laughs> well, I can promise you what the story I just shared. <laughs> that was not my favorite moment. Well, you got one for us? No. I think what might come to mind was the, was the live show and trying to – I couldn't get to the studio. I couldn't get there, the traffic. I had to go to the back gate. And the guard didn't have my name. And he said, I can't let you in. I said, you, your, 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 your job is on the line. I have to be on the stage in 20 minutes. See all that traffic? That's because of me. He goes, well, 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 wait a minute. Now, wait. I say, we don't have a minute. Get on the horn and, and get me on this lot. And he did. And he, oh, my God. He's like, oh, go. Okay, sorry. He gets the word. And, you know, you can hear the <laughs> phone. They were screaming at him. And so I raced onto the lot and, and made it. But I think that was kind of a favorite moment because I realized, wow, this is huge. That was the infamous Universal Studios yeah. show. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I, uh, everybody of that generation of the show, yeah, they, I love hearing each one's version of that story. And for those of you who don't know, they did, oh, as we'll do a, a live show, and it completely shut down the highways. It made national as news. The ropes with respects to the roads is the only way I got, I knew I could get around and in through the back gate. I, I, came, I get to the front gate. I came on to that show, that very show, two years later when it went international. So then they took us to Mexico and around the world and stuff like that but uh australia actually mexico dan australia. did you work with travis wong on that stuff no travis wong works with, we worked together on a live appearance corporate live appearance mm. corporate. <clears throat> i don't i did a stunt show again with uh fox so at first it was mca and uh, what was uh, anita man productions did the did the first and then anita man productions came back and did a fox team up and then Anita is was the uh, um, well, uh, she was a dancer, right? She was a dance choreographer. So they did all and the. We life. were horrified when we she was directing us, yep. voice actors. And yep. I'm sorry, Anita, but this is not. You should not. You have no idea what you're doing. None. Yeah, that, that was downright irritating. That that was a that was a that was a tough situation. Record. Yeah, that was a very interesting experience because of that. And they brought me on because I was the only martial artist they had in cast, so they wanted me mm. in the martial art moves. Um, gotcha. So Travis Wong and I did a corporate appearance for MIPCOM, I think. It was years later. Okay. Yeah, I met Travis. Uh, he coordinated, stunt coordinated, um, I guest starred on a Disney show, Kicking It, and he was the... Uh, he stunt coordinated what? Kicking It on Disney Channel. I so remember he, that. He so I, I was the rigger and stunt coordinator on kicking it for four years with co coordinator with Mitch Gould for four years. And then maybe he was uh, the fight choreographer because he no, he came on and probably did some fight choreography, but I was the main fight choreographer on that show. I never met you on it, though. that's weird because like yeah, I, I did, so, uh, I did this, I did the wire work, I, I, I appeared as like 10 different various characters for sure. It's I did the fight choreography. We took over for uh, Zendaya's show, and then we left that show after the first eight episodes, and then other coordinators came in. So it might have been that one that you're thinking about. Okay. No, I, I was never on the Shake It Up. Uh, yeah, might have done uh, episodes of the first season of Kicking It. We took over after the first season and finished. Maybe it was the first season then, because I mean, Probably. people were still pretty young on it. But he was the one who like Probably. taught me what right. I like. I had to break a board and stuff or something. Yeah. But that's huh. how I met him, and um, I did a workshop. To work on Kicking It was. One of one of the best show experiences I've ever had because everybody was amazing, and we became. <clears throat> it's it's rare you get those experiences where you show up to work and you look forward to seeing everyone. That's yeah. true. Yeah, no, it really is. Quickly, no. thank you for sharing these kicking it memories. So, what's your favorite Power Ranger memory? <laughs> <laughs> what's Power Rangers good? Um, <laughs> on, an all, on an all new, off the rails. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't have it any other way. 
go for it, Mary. What's your favorite Power Ranger memory? Or do I have to go because I'm middle? I'm in between these two guys. Okay. Anyway, you want. Yeah, you do it. Doesn't have to be, doesn't go, have to be a fam- just just something that something a memory that you kind of treasure. Doesn't have to be the all time favorite, but just but something that me, lingers with you. For me, it was one of the first shows I was ever cast in, and I got to play uh, a series regular, and that was pretty amazing. I mean, I was still honing my craft at the time, but it was all. That was when. It's, it's like martial artists say this too. When when you're fir- when you're new at it, and you're kind of. Uh, uh, a novice and then you're and you're developing your craft and your abilities it's all magical and interesting and amazing. and that's what the show felt like it was just so awesome to go to sh- go to set and you know now you you go to set and you're like yeah yeah I've seen that yeah that's okay yeah whatever yeah okay. <laughs> jaded. <laughs> jaded. i wouldn't say jaded just not you, you your know, experience not so you know overwhelmed by what a show is you know so that the newness of that show will be something I'll, I'll always remember. Mm-hmm. When I felt uh, like when I felt like my career was was skyrocketing. <laughs> <laughs> Before well, the show, when it just, <laughs> well, it's I remember, a roller coaster. It's gonna come back up. Give it time. I remember standing in the store the day the the night the 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 night after the SWAT the SWAT bringing it back <laughs> for show. Yeah. It aired that night, and I'm and I'm in the supermarket. I'm 20, 20, 21, looking, looking, looking at people, seeing. Yeah. Saying, yeah. Anybody, you, yeah, yeah. you recognize yeah. me at all? Huh? Me? <laughs> <laughs> I went to the, I went to Toys R Us to buy the toy that had my face on it, and it has my little picture in. And I went to the counter, and I'm like. Getting ready. To buy it. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, all right, that'll be seventeen ninety nine, sir. Uh-huh. Like. Nobody. Nobody. All right, sir. Next in line, please. <laughs> Enjoy playing with your doll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Brennan, bring us home. Yeah. Well, I guess again, um, because I was a fan first, and then I became a ranger. Like I've been on other shows too, but none of them was a show I grew up watching because none of them had the legacy that Power Rangers and hasn't been as long running as Power Rangers. Like when I was on American Horror Story, I was in the first season of American Horror Story. So although it was popular, it wasn't like it had, you know, five seasons behind it. Power Rangers has had, yeah. I don't even know what number season we're on anymore. Like 20 something or 30 sure. or more. Yeah. yeah, so it's just, and then when I became a Ranger, I, again, like I was mentioning, I was just about to quit. Like I, I signed up for college. I was gonna go get my degree and ended up booking Rangers. So I put my degree on hold, ended up getting right. it afterwards. Uh, but yeah, it's just like right when you're about to quit. And then when I was in New Zealand, no one cares in New Zealand about Power Rangers because it wasn't even airing in New Zealand. Uh, It wasn't allowed to air because it was too violent. That would be a problem. Yeah. Yeah. But like, we thought like we, we get off work and our day off, we'd walk to the city and someone would recognize us. No, Ah. not not a single person Ah. like ever knew who we were. Hardly anybody recognizes you. The, the funny thing is you'll, I'll be places and I'll see some at the time I would see some seven or eight year old, year old kid staring at me mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh, oh it's probably me you recognize me right <laughs> mom's like what are you doing what are you doing staring at that man for me like, oh, mama. yeah 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 come on come on <laughs> <laughs> that was <the> <laughs> well okay like the one time that's a memory I- yeah, um, I actually was recognized when I came back for Beast Morphers, which was like the latest crossover that I did with Austin St. John. And uh, I, I did a convention first. So I did a convention in New Zealand and then went back to the, where we were going to film in Auckland. But where the convention was, someone recognized me and we were trying to keep the team up like a secret. And so I was like, oh, I'm only here for, for the convention. I'm not here to film because like everyone was like thinking it was going to happen that year. And then I went to Auckland where we were filming the reunion. I was with Yoshi, my blue ranger and Jackie, the yellow beast morphers ranger. Mm -hmm. And we were gonna go do a jujitsu class together. And then the same guy that I saw at the convention a couple of weeks before was in the same city and he saw me again. And and Yoshi grabbed Jackie and threw her like into the Uber so they could hide because he already knew I was there for the convention. And if he saw them there, it would have given away Right. that the team up was happening. So it's like you go from not being recognized at all to seeing the same guy twice in the same country, like sure. hundreds of miles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, gentlemen, thank you for sharing me this way too. Uh, we are going to switch over to our audience questions for our remaining time and to our audience. 
We do apologize. Austin St. John cannot join us due to technical issues. We have been trying to get a, a good enough signal for him, but where he's at right now, unfortunately, just could not sustain it. If oh, you have a he's gonna get an ass kicking, I'm telling you. If you have a photo a virtual photo op or a live chat with him, uh, GalaxyCon management, we will be emailing you and we will reschedule. We will reschedule probably next week, so stay tuned for that. And we do oh, apologize. Oh, Sometimes oh, these things happen. Oh, have Austin St. John, right here. Oh. I'll be dropping in on that. One. <laughs> I'll be dropping in on that one. Uh, uh, it's a date. It's a date. <laughs> I'm just gonna drop in and have a few words. That's all. Austin, Austin's here. Austin's here. You all thought you could do this show without me. I'm here. I'm here to answer your questions. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good, man. <laughs> Austin, you look different without the beard. <laughs> All right, I tell you what, dude. Why don't you roll some questions for our audience and let's roll out from that friend. There's one comes from Kim, who likes to know who was the biggest prankster on your respective sets, and do you remember any jokes or just funny moments while you were on set on your respective series? <clears throat> no. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Moving it right along, I see. <laughs> well, anybody else got one? Well, I've always said, I mean, it's not on set, obviously, we're behind the microphone, but the yeah. amount of horrible, unbelievable, bad stuff we used to do as outtakes, and if I could have just all the outtakes that we did throughout all my career, not just on Power Rangers, but so many other shows, I mean, if there is a heaven, one of the first things I'm going to ask is, can I... Can I spend a day hearing all of my outtakes? That 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 would be a real. That would be it's hours. Be. It would be hours. <clears throat> There's a magnetic tape somewhere. It's sitting around in a closet. <laughs> yeah, no, today I'm afraid we'd be in real trouble for some of the stuff. Yeah. We, yeah. No, not, not then. We did we did some fun stuff. You know, they got into all that trouble. Uh, what's the what's the show that we originally did? I was the original Yamcha on the oh, show Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball, the whole cast got in all kinds of trouble for doing bad sexual <laughs> jokes and shit. <laughs> you know, not you know, today. You can't do nothing today. You know there were a lot of pranks on the live show uh, when I did the live show between those cast members. But when I worked on the TV show, Jason Fawn and all those guys, they uh, they knew each other really well. I was semi ostracized uh, in the in the story and therefore that carried through a little bit but also that may, may have been my arrogant personality <laughs> <laughs> i got along with them well enough though but you know they would joke around with each other and play but i don't i don't remember there being any real pranks so you'll have fair. to have, have some more of those kinds of stories between themselves fair not at all Fred, I, any uh, any amusing stories anecdotes or? i mean <laughs> We all would joke with each other, but it wasn't like we played practical jokes. The only one that really stands out at the moment was a Halloween special where all of the Rangers were ghosts, you know, just like a sheet over us and like the eye cutouts. But you really couldn't see who was under it because it covered our feet as well. And so Michael Tabor, our Green Ranger, and I decided uh, to switch like where we were supposed to be. And so he actually played me for that scene and I played him and no one knew. And so when it came to like dubbing ourselves, I think he ended up like dubbing me and i dubbed him because like we were actually like physically where we weren't supposed to be but not that it mattered because again we were under a sheet so it's not like it was like it was funny to us and the director afterwards got a kick out of it because like it didn't ruin anything but that's really it nothing crazy i know jason, i know jason arby and uh and uh what's his name my friend whose name escapes me the big guy the uh bulk and skull they, they did all oh, paul schreier Paul's yeah, right. Paul. Well, they they did pranks on set all the time. I bet they'd I have bet. to be here to talk yeah. about that. Yeah, I can Wait. say this. I can say that um, when I came onto the show, I could I could. There was a little bit of a rumor going around amongst the other cast members that they, they didn't quite understand the the formula for the show, so they thought that I was there to replace one of them. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I didn't bother to let them know otherwise, even though. Oh, I <laughs> that's not that funny. That's yeah. that nice guy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Kim, thank you very much. That was a great one. And from Daniel, who wants to know if you could be in another Power Rangers series, what would it be and why? 
Uh, I don't know what, what it would be. I mean, I guess it would be the next one. <laughs> that's usually my answer too. Yeah, the one yeah. that's not airing yet. Um, <laughs> you know, this I'm on the last run of being this Jackie Chan esque kind of actor. I'm I'm I'm, I'm getting tired of karate kicking, so. It would have to be soon. It would have to be some sort of ninja samurai. You know, it could be a samurai, some sort of samurai derivation or variation. Where yeah. I don't kick at all. I just have to slam a big metal piece around on monsters, and that's that's what I would probably go for. Or maybe even better yet, some Harry Potter esque kind of uh, theme. Mystic where force. Where I just have to wave a stick at something and it goes boom. I don't have to. <laughs> well, I I put you back to work in the suit. <laughs> And it would be a, a, a Goldar origin story. And oh, it would boy. Be a very, 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 very large check. Yes. Okay. All right. That would be nice. Then that's, that's, that would be why. That's the why part. <laughs> that's, the screen actors, that's the Screen Actors Guild part. Okay. We'll leave it at that. Yeah. There you go. Fair, fair. So, yeah. So I think, yeah, uh, Brennan, you said the next one. And, uh, that that's fair <laughs> it's absolutely fair so daniel thank you so much uh i think we have time for one more so from kevin what do you like most about your character or one of your characters if you have played multiple well, i'm gonna take it please as much as i love goldar he was very one note and i did everything in my power no pun intended to bring out all of the emotions of frustration and anger and sadness and everything I could bring to this poor tortured soul. And I think maybe I accomplished it a little because I think that's why they, there's so much interest in Goldar. I don't, he, he, he was written very one note and I, I tried to give him yeah. more stuff juxtaposed to magna defender which was probably one of if not the most demanding voiceover character i've ever done uh, as an actor the arc of this anti-hero um i watched it <laughs> for the first time ever about three years ago uh, I thank you, Netflix. Shout out to Netflix for yes. writing. Yes, <laughs> they're, 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 thank you, thank they you, thank you. I send them a care package. Yeah. But um, I mean, you know, when you watch your performance after 20 years, I, I was pretty certain it was pretty damn good. But you never know. I've seen like my infamous SWAT story. Um, <laughs> So I watched, I watched it back to back. It was only nine episodes and this character gets a lot of ink. My God, you know, when you're bawling at your own you know, uh, performance, <laughs> I was crying at the end. <laughs> <laughs> so Magna was, and I remember in the studio, how I was hold, trying to hold it, hold it together, getting through that end of, of his, his, you know, Anyway, that that's all from me. No, it's fair. I, I can say um, I can say that for my character, I love that he was an antihero as well. And he, he yeah. his character arc from being a villainous character to coming around and finding, <coughs> finding peace in his life. Well, it, it, again, my character was in the writing. I mean, it, it, the writing was there for mm -hmm. me. It was one of the best written uh, uh, shows I'd ever done in that segment of Lost Galaxy. It was really good, so. So yeah, that's that's my, that's my answer to it. And uh, I guess for me, um, I like that Tyler, he, he's, well, I do like anti-heroes, but he's definitely like just straight up hero, I think, in how he, he's always po like positive, um, always, you know, like never giving up kind of thing. Again, yeah. just hearkening back to, I feel like what runs through Power Rangers uh, in general is the whole never giving up attitude. And so I like that despite the odds, he always tries anyway to come up with some way to uh, get his team through it. So that's what I, I take. I away. gave up on being bad. That's true. That's true. You wear good. Well, you wear bad. Well, too. So you're very diverse. 
<laughs> Kevin, thank you so much for that. And GalaxyCon viewers, this has been my time with the cast of the Power Rangers. Gentlemen, before we go, any final words for our audience? Thank you so much for uh, tuning in with us, hanging out with us on this Saturday. And we hope to see you guys in person when that's a thing again. So, <laughs> Yes, and uh, I enjoyed it. I always enjoy it. And I always enjoy the questions. And also, I am now on Cameo. So you can look me up. Dan underscore Southworth is my username. Or just I'm going to buy one from him right now. And it's Very uh, cool. Very cool. <laughs> continue, we can continue the fun anytime, any day. I'd like to say thank you to my fans and thank you to both of you guys who, who, with whom I've never met these guys' fans. These are the first time I've met them. This is the first time I've met both of these gentlemen. And uh, the fact that, that Dan was my Goldar, um, that's crazy after all these years. <laughs> I look, to more, look forward to more opportunities to hang out with you, Kerrigan. Hey, that, we could have fun. I'd like to meet your agent, actually, so. Okay, sure. Yeah. I don't want to, but tell him I don't memorize lines. I need cute cards. <laughs> uh, gentlemen, it is my absolute pleasure to serve you all today. Thank you for joining us at the Galaxy Hunter Virtual Stage. Thank you to our audience for joining us today, and thank you all for those great questions. Bye-bye, everyone. Take care, and please keep washing those hands. <laughs>